Hey everyone, this guy is and welcome to part 2 of my Flying Machine Basics uh, series. So in the last uh, episode, we looked at different kinds of flying machines, ways to power pistons and return mechanisms. How the flying machines are a bit useless, they just go back and forth. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can add some functionality using some extensions uh, to your flying machines. So let's get started. Alright, so to start off, we're going to be looking at some basic extensions that uh, we normally use with flying machines. So the first step is a TNT uh, duplicator. I have no idea how this works. I don't use it ever. I just decided to use it in this video because it's a really, really good way to practice uh, constructing slightly complicated flying machines. All right, next up, we've got blue ice and soul sand. If there's lava between them, it forms basalt. This is basically how basalt road generators work in the nether. All right, next up, we've got another road generator. This is the ice come um, water generator. Basically, we've got waterlogged stairs, which create um, a water source right in the middle. If you one tick the pistons, um, the water source is retained and is pushed forward. All right, next up, we've got what I like to call the wall. Um, basically, we've if we've got blocks in front of these pistons and using... Um, the observers behind, if we update both the observers, you can see that the, the blocks are moved forward. This way we can transport a large number of blocks over a longer distance. Um, yeah. Now the reason why we need uh, these extensions is that pistons have got this unique thing where they can only push 12 blocks. Uh, so as you saw, I just placed 12 blocks there, it pushed. The 13th block, it cannot. And the major problem is all these flying machines are actually pretty hefty. If you were to look at a standard flying machine, the rare piston in itself is actually pushing three different blocks. You've got the sticky piston, uh, the slime block, and the observer. If you look at a TNT duper, that's approximately tw uh, 10 blocks uh, that is trying to push. This guy is another seven blocks. Uh, this one over here is, what's this, eight blocks. And in case you didn't have the pistons in front, it would immediately get stuck because um, these blocks are also going to be counting towards the push limit. So basically what we are trying to do is we're trying to circumvent that problem with the push limit. All right, so the first step to constructing a good appendage or an extension is to actually design one. So as you can see, here are some of the basic designs as I just showed you. Uh, now we're just gonna try and uh, create one just impromptu. Basically, I want something that, say, uh, pulls blocks from the side into the middle. Uh, so, say we've got this kind of railing, and basically we want to push, uh, pull all the blocks towards the center. Uh, instead of going and doing it manually, you can construct uh, something like this, where we've got two stick pistons. These can extend and pull the blocks towards them. Now, we just need to connect it, because we do want it to move in sync. And then we've got to figure out how to power the pistons and that's simply done by placing two observers which pass slime block now the useful thing with actually having an observer uh, parting a slime block is it can actually part the piston um, below the piston required as well which is really really useful it helps you to cut down on a lot of blocks it's actually uh, mirror this on this side and yeah so basically i've just created uh, my extension it will pull all the blocks towards the middle all right, so the next part is to actually figure out what part of your flying machine actually has to be moved. Now, in this case, if I were to move this top um, slime block, I know that uh, the entirety of the TNT duper will move and it will also duplicate the TNT. So that's the important block. Now, in this case, uh, any of these slime blocks can easily be pulled. And yeah, uh, oops, my bad. And yeah. So if I pull any of these slime blocks, the whole thing will move as one. The next one, the waterlock stairs are a bit tricky because we've got to move the pistons uh, first, and then we've got to push the pistons themselves forwards. It's a bit complicated, so we're not going to look into that. In this case, uh, we've got two slime blocks here, and I know that if I move any of the slime blocks, it will move forward. So I can just simply create a small extension here so that uh, moving that becomes slightly easier. Now, in this case, we've got a wall of slime. Slime, everything sticks to it, so uh, figuring out how to push it isn't too hard. All right, the next part is to actually figure out which direction your flying machines are going. TNT dupers tend to go forwards, 
Uh, therefore, it comes under the category of a push flying machine. Now, a basalt road maker is a pull flying machine. Basically, you want to be pulling this forwards because if the basalt forms over here and you've got the flying machine behind it, the basalt is just basically going to uh, get stuck with the flying machine and you're going to have tons of problems. This is another good example of a push. This is another push flying machine. As you can see, it only pushes the blocks forward. Obviously, you could make it a pull flying machine if you replace some of the blocks with sticky pistons. So, yeah. Now, yeah, once again, if this was made into a pull flying machine, you can see that the flying machine would start interfering with itself, and that's the last thing that you want. So this is most definitely a push flying machine. Uh, push extension, sorry. Now, this, this one, as I said, works forwards. So, yeah. All right, so the next part is to actually uh, set up the piston that's going to be moving your extension. So in case you've got a push flying machine, you want to place a block, um, place it a block away. You don't want it directly connected and then an observer to part it. Now, I like to use the horizontal observer uh, because that's the most efficient, I feel. Now, in case you're using a pull flying machine, you want the sticky piston to be directly connected to the extension. Once again over here we've got a push flying machine meaning I'm going to have to place the piston a block away from the slime block and finally the observer on top and same goes for our small thing over here. Once again it's a push flying machine so it has to be a block away. Alright so next up we've got to actually construct the engines. So in the last video, I showed a few different styles of engines. This is the one I'm going to be using two by two. And most importantly, because we've got two slime blocks on either end, we can easily connect um, the appendages to these slime blocks. This would be the rear end uh, for the pull ones and the front end for the push ones. All right, so let's actually try and connect one. So over here, we've got the slime block for the, pist uh, the extension pusher. And we are just going to extend it a tiny bit and then construct our engine over here. As you can see, it is connected to the front end of the flying machine. And if I just set off the observer, it should actually go on. You can also construct the flying machine behind. It doesn't really matter as long as it's actually connected and can function as a flying machine. Now you notice that I'm actually doing my best to have uh, the observers with clear blocks in front of them because that helps for activation sending the flying machine back and forth. It's always a good idea to have a clear observer. Now, in this case of the pull observer, uh, of the pull extension, uh, we're just basically going to construct it in reverse. We are going to try and connect it to the rear end. Once again, observers are free. There's nothing really interrupting them. Now, just going uh, quickly over to our final one. Once again, we can very easily connect it from the back end. Uh, I'm sort of mirroring the normal flying machine because I'm trying to hide it behind the wall. And once again, very simple observer um, layout. And yeah, this is basically how it works. You just need to make sure that you're connecting the right set of blocks to the right set of blocks and you're ensuring the correct uh, motion. Alright, so finally we're just going to be quickly looking at reversible flying machines. In case you want to add an extension, all you got to do is just place a sticky piston on that block because it's going to be directly powered by the observer. Uh, next up, uh, for the extension itself, you want to obviously place it a block away uh, because it's going to be pushed forward. You can attach all kinds of things to that. But most importantly, on the return, you do want a piece of obsidian or an immovable block because it could actually pull back and break the whole flying machine. So anyways guys, thanks for watching. This means guys, I'm Anamat Sachapna. Shall see you in the next video.